Hi, I'm Chris Mushler, VCDX257 from virtualelephant.com. And in my previous videos, I've showed you how to install Kubernetes using Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, Rancher inside an on-prem data center, and even Azure AKS. Now in this video, I'm gonna go back to the beginning and show you how to deploy an open source Kubernetes cluster from scratch. Let's get started. Before we start installing Kubernetes, I'm first going to review my environment with you. You can see here in my vCenter server window that I have an open source folder that I've deployed six virtual machines to, OS Controller 1, 2, 3, and OS Node 1, 2, and 3. Now the important thing to remember here is that I've configured each of these slightly differently. The three controller nodes have two vCPUs and four gigs of memory, while the OS nodes, which are going to be our workers, have four CPUs and eight gigs of memory. This is going to be important later on when we start to deploy applications inside of this cluster. Now for the front end load balancer, since this is running inside of my home lab, I'm going to be using the NSX Advanced Load Balancer or ALB. Now the first thing that I need to do is actually make sure that my network that I have my virtual machines attached to is actually properly configured to be able to allocate automatically VIPs, uh, for both the virtual services and the service engines themselves. So here in my UI, you can see that I've opened it up to the NSLB, ALB, and I'm going to go to Infrastructure, Cloud Resources, and Networks. Now I've installed these on this dpg cilium network, and this is just a VLAN that I have inside of my thing. And you can see that it's pre-configured for a static IP pool of 10.105.0.150 through 199, and it's set for both SEs and the VIPs. And you can actually see that I've already been using this network for some other things inside of the environment. And so four of those VIPs have actually been allocated already. So the next thing we're going to do, because I want a specific IP address that I've pre-allocated outside of that normal range and set up the DNS for, I'm gonna come over here and go to VS VIPs and I'm going to create a new VIP. I'm going to give it a name, and we're going to call this OS Kate's API VIP. And I'm going to add a VIP. And instead of allowing it to auto allocate, I'm going to say static. And now I've gone ahead and give this 10.105.0.100. That's what I've set up um, already. And I'm going to select the placement network, which is that dpg cilium and then here you can select the network. Now I'm not doing IPv6, but you ALB does support IPv6 networks if you wanted to do it that way. So go ahead and click save and then save again and then one more time. And now we can see here os-cates-api vip 10.105.0.100, and you can also see it's not yet attached to a virtual service. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to come up here to virtual services. We're going to go create basic setup. First thing, so that you don't skip it, click that L4. Now give it a name. I like to do it similarly, so now I do os-cates-api dash vs for virtual service. Now under the vs dash vip drop down, I'm going to go and find that one that we just created down here at the bottom, select it. And now for the server IP ranges, we're going to go ahead and give it some specific servers. 10.105.0.101 is the first controller. 10.105.0.102 is the second controller that we're going to create, and 10.105.0.103, and go ahead and click Add Server. And this is all that you have to do initially to create the virtual service. Now it's gone ahead and it's created it. We're seeing that it's red because it's not yet done anything with it. We can click back on this, and you can see that it says pools belonging to this virtual service are down, because it's actually not yet configured all the way that we want it to be. So I'm going to click on the edit icon pencil over here for it. Okay, now we want the services to actually be running on port 6443. Can I click save? 
Now it's still not yet going to actually come up because we've got to come down here to the pools. And when we created that virtual service, it created this virtual pool object for us here. And you can see that it's red. So we're going to go over here and click on the icon again to edit it. And we're going to scroll down here because one of the things you're going to see, I want to enable real-time metrics for the pool, is that there's no port specified here. So we're going to go ahead and click edit for each one of these. We're going to go port 6443. All right, so now we are ready to get Kubernetes installed. Now, one of the things that I have done is I've used an Ubuntu 20.04 template that I've created. And in this template, I've done things like configuring the log server, adding SSH keys, configuring the DNS. I've also installed Docker already, as well as the kubectl, kubeadmin uh, packages as well um, inside of Ubuntu so that those things are already all done for me. If you need to do those, there's plenty of how-to pages. Just Google for, you know, Ubuntu Kubernetes install or Ubuntu Docker install, and you'll find how to do those, usually off of DigitalOcean, actually, and that's a quick way to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and, and we're going to SSH into the first controller. All right, so now we're on our controller so you can see like which cube admin it's installed. You can also see like Docker PS and we have that and we can even make sure that Docker's installed correctly by running Docker hello world. And we're good to go here. So what we're going to do actually is install Kubernetes. All right, so we need to run the cube admin command, sudo cube admin init odd network cider 10.244.00/16. And then we're going to tell it the control plane endpoint. And this is the uh, load balancer that we've created inside of the NSX advanced load balancer. So that's 10.105. Actually, you can give it an IP address or you can give it a DNS name. And we've actually given this a DNS name. So we'll do os dash api dot cilium dot virtual elephant dot com and then port 6443 and then we're also going to tell it to upload the certs and then i always go verbose 5 so that you can see a bit more information when you execute the command so just look over it one more time it looks good so we're going to go ahead and hit enter And we can see it's starting to pull the images uh, off the internet that it needs to stand up the initial controller for us. So this will run for a minute or two. So you can see here it's finished deploying the first controller and it's got some information for us here in the screen that I typically copy off over to a notepad file because we're going to use some of these commands as we go ahead and bring up the other nodes within the cluster. Now one of the important things here is just this top part here on the controller. Go ahead and run those commands. Now we can do a cube cuddle, get nodes, and you're going to see there's the first controller. It's in a not ready state and you'll see why here in a moment when we do kube cuddle get pods minus a and you're gonna see that we still have the core DNS in a pending state, and that's because we have not yet installed a CNI, and when you run the cube admin command to initialize the cluster, there is no CNI by default installed with Kubernetes. This is one of the things that we need to handle as Kubernetes operators and enterprise architects when we're designing a Kubernetes service is making a determination of what CNI we're going to use for the networking. But in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and actually bring up the other two controllers really quickly. So we'll exit here. We'll go to second controller and you can do these in serial. You can write an Ansible script if you wanted to, um, whatever you'd like to be able to automate this. But again, sudo, and then we're gonna copy the command 
that was up here, this join command. Okay, now again, I'm just going to go like that so that I can go space my V5 and then go ahead and hit enter. And it's going to go ahead and now bring up the second controller. So now there's the second one. Again, we'll just make sure that we get the cube admin installed where we want it. Log into the third controller. Run the command for it to join. Again, really in a quick moment or two, it'll be finished. Obviously the time that this takes will be dependent on your environment, but usually sub five minutes, generally speaking, for each node to come online. So there's the third controller. Okay, now we'll go to the first worker node. Now the command here is different because obviously you're not adding it to the control plane, but instead we're adding it to as a worker node. So this goes really fast. So now that all three are installed, we'll go back to the very first controller. It's generally where I do things. Obviously you can pick any of them and that'll be fine. So we'll go coop cuddle, get nodes, and we'll see all six are there. Again, all six are in a not ready status because again, no CNI, which we're going to do here in just a moment, but we'll just look at the get pods to see what's running inside of the cluster and you can see there's three controller managers three api servers there's a proxy service for each node the three schedulers as well as our etcd service so the next thing that we need to do is install a cni all right in this video we've configured kubernetes inside of our first six nodes and performed the initial configuration and it's ready for us to install a cni and be able to start leveraging the cluster Please check out part two where I cover those installation steps and walk you through the final things leading you, leading you to have a Kubernetes cluster that's fully operational. If you like this content, please click that subscribe button. Please like this video and leave a comment below of let me know what you think. And please check out part two. Until next time.